Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Fenway Park. This is Mark Fidrich. Now, each time he gets the ball back, you'll see him mumble a couple of words to the ball. The first man ever to pitch five career no-hitters. Catch them all, Joe! I don't believe what I just saw! Another chance for Mitchell, and he makes a pair-handed catch! Ricky goes, a pitch stick, and he's going to have it. Leaps high of the air, and he's got it! Let it be said that number eight, Cal Ripken Jr., has reached the unreachable star. Today, Today I, consider I consider myself, myself the, luckiest the luckiest man, man on the face, on the of, the face earth. of the earth. Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we invite you to rise. We invite you to rise. Hey, fans, welcome to the Daily Rewind. My name's Tom Hannon, and I'm your host. The Daily Rewind is brought to you by ThisDayInBaseball.com. ThisDayInBaseball.com is a treasure chest full of baseball events. We bring you everything from the thrill of victory to the agony of defeat in every milestone, oddball event in between. And I'm just surprised myself at the events I find every day on ThisDayInBaseball.com. And it's more than just a written word. We have thousands of videos, audio, and images to go along with all those amazing stories. Today's episode is about March 15th, 1939. And right now we are all missing spring training. I get it. So today I'm going to give you a partial spring training game from 1939, the Cincinnati Reds versus the New York Yankees. It isn't a full game, but it's 30 minutes of baseball and I hope you enjoy it. What a lot of folks think is a spring preview this fall in the World Series. The New York Yankees, world champions of the American League and the Cincinnati Reds of the National League. The ball game got underway 15 minutes ago, and the first inning has just been completed. And you haven't missed anything except fine work by pitchers Red Ruffing and Lee Grissom, who are the starting hurlers this afternoon. Grissom took care of the first three Yankees up in order, striking out Crisetti, getting Powell to foul out to catcher Ernie Lombardi, and getting Big Gallagher to lift the fly ball to Harry Kraft in center. Red Ruffing was almost equally as effective in the last half of the first inning when he got Lana Spry leading off to lift a high fly ball down to third, Waterberger to dump one down in front of the plate and catch your Aunt Jorgen through the big left fielder out at first base. Stanley Bordegray drew a pass to be the only base runner of the afternoon, but Frank McCormick immediately left stand standard at first when he hit right back to the box and Ruffing with Consumities tossed over to first. And that's the story for the first inning. We have the story for the first inning. We have time to give you the two batting orders before we get into the pitch-by-pitch pitch account of the second inning, which is just a moment or so from getting on the way. For the Yankees, if you have your batting orders down in front of you and you wish to fill them in, Crisetti is leading off at short. Powell is in left field. Gallagher is in right field. Hitting fourth is Joe DiMaggio, who'll soon be up there swinging that wood. Gehrig at first base. Up sixth is Gordon, the second baseman. Babe Dahlgren is at third. Red Roth is on his way into camp, and that's all that can be said right now. Aunt Jorgens is catching, hitting eight, and the pitcher is Rufus the Red, big red roughing. The secret of his pitching success is getting that ball where he wants it more than anything else. It's very, very rare that he's not pitching ahead to the hitter. And for the Cincinnati Reds, who are now a field, and the Yankees are coming in for the top of the second, Lana Spry is at third base and leading off the batting list. Berger in left field, hitting second. Up third is Stanley Bordegaray in right. Batting fourth, Frank McCormick, first baseman. Up fifth, the National League's champion hitter for last year, Ernie Lombardi, who's catching. Harry Kraft in center. Up seventh is Eddie Juice, the kid second baseman, a rookie. Nolan Richardson, veteran utility infielder at short. And Lee Grissom is the pitcher. And both pitchers had something on that agate in the first inning. Now let's see, DiMaggio steps up. Lee Grissom is set on the mound. Lombardi's back at the plate. McCormick at first base. Juice at second. Richardson at short. And the third is fire. The outfield is Berger in left. Bordegray's in right. And in center, Harry Kraft. Joe DiMaggio, big right-handed hitter. He gets a big hand from the fans down in Tampa, Florida. The weather is sunshiny and clear. Temperature at 80 degrees. And there's a little breeze that's blowing from the back of first base toward third. Which means it helps those hitters who hit toward left field. Big Grissom comes in with a pitch and DiMaggio swinging. Pulls it foul on the ground behind third base for strike one. That's the first pitch for the second inning. The ball game's nothing and nothing. Both pitches off to very effective starts. Grissom throws low inside down across DiMaggio's shins. 
And the count's balance is one and one. One ball and one strike. This is the first man up in the second inning. The New York Yankees over to Tampa. Visiting the Cincinnati Reds. Grissom doesn't use a windup, an easy swinging stretch. He kicks that right foot of his high and pitches from the back of it. DiMaggio swinging, hits a foul up and back over the stands behind home. And Grissom is now ahead one and two. So far, not a Yankees touch first base. It's the first man up in the second inning. Lee delivers, DiMaggio swings, it's a sharp foul right back into the screen. Still one and two. Grissom's fast this afternoon, working with an easy freewheeling action. If he's in condition, the Reds will be very, very tough birds to get along with this summer. The big left-hander pitches and misses the outside corner, and it's two and two. Jolting Joe DiMaggio up there. Grissom pitching for Cincinnati. The throws outside for ball three, and it's three and two. DiMaggio stays in the box. Lombardi sets his mid as a target. Grist pitches. DiMaggio swings, gets a hold of it. It's a long line drive going deep over into left center field. Harry Kraft is on his bicycle and makes the catch. A nice catch by Harry Kraft running into deep left center field. DiMaggio had that one tagged. And that's all for DiMaggio. And it's one up and one away for the New York Yankees. In the top of the second inning. In this ball game, played at Tampa, Florida with the Cincinnati Reds. And the batter is Lou Gehrig. Columbia Lou, hitting left-handed. There's some studies in the moment. We have a left-handed pitcher. Left-handed hitter. Gary takes inside. That one up against him. Chris throwing that one down tight. Ball one. One out. No score. Nobody on. Top of the second inning. Another inside one, and Gary's ahead 2-0. and all. Lou takes a look. Get a sign whether to take this next one, if it's in there. Chris pitches low outside. Gary leaned, but didn't offer. Now it's 3 nothing. Three balls. No strikes. Gehrig sets. The pitch comes wide for ball four. And on four straight pitches, Gehrig is passed to first base. And that's the first Yankee runner. We haven't had a hit in the ball game. Haven't had a man for either side to get as far as second. But now it's Flash Gordon. Getting right-handed. Young second baseman takes his stand. Grissom pitches outside, and he's missed his target five straight slants. Four balls in a row to Gehrig. Now the first pitch misses to Gordon. Gehrig takes a good lead off first. McCormick holding him on. Red leg in a defense, pulled up a step, hoping for a double play. Chris turns loose the fast ball that Gordon takes, and it's good for a strike. One and one. One ball and one strike. The umpires this afternoon, back of the plate is Vic Campbell, who will be in the National League this summer, and took grass of the American League on the bases. Chris's pitch is low inside. Down across Gordon's shin. And Lee's pitching low, trying to make Gordon hit onto the ground. So an infielder can get a hold of it. And get at least a force at second, perhaps. Not a twin execution. Two and one. Gordon swings, hits a foul. It's back. Up against the stand. It's two all. Two two. This one's ready with a new apple. Gordon pumps that stick once, twice. Garrick a good lead off first. No score. One man on for the Yankees here in the second. One out. The pitch is inside for ball three. Four. And the bases are loaded on three walks. Jorgens draws a base on ball. That pushes Dogger from first down to second. Gary, who was at third hold. And that's three walks. And a third of an inning. The hitter now is Red Ruffy. He's the pitcher. But he also lays on that old potato. Big Red takes a pitch, and Grissom has it through there for a call strike. He went ahead with the first one. The base is full. Jorgens at first, Dahlgren at second, Garrick at third. No score. The Yankees threatening to get a bushel basket full of runs here in the second inning. Chris throws. It's a fastball that snaps in there. Ruffing fell away from the plate, but it was in there good for a call second strike. Nothing in two. Now let's see. Ruffing, a big right-handed batter. Sets. Chris throws. Ruffing swings and is struck out. And Red Ruffing is struck out, and that ends the Yankee threat of a lot of runs in the second inning. That's the second strikeout for Grissom. It came at a time he sorely needed it. And it's no runs, no hits, and three left on. That's the story for the last half of the second inning. And it's nothing and nothing, and the Reds are coming in for the last of the second. Lombardi to lead it off, then Kraft, and then Juice. You know, if you ladies 
For playing ball, people would expect your hands to look like a shortstop, wouldn't they? But as it is, men expect your hands to be soft and pretty, even if you do wash dishes every day. And listen, your hands can look soft. Honestly, they can. Why, women who wash their dishes with ivory soap have no trouble at all helping to keep their hands looking nice. You see, ivory is so pure that doctors recommend it for bathing babies. So naturally, it's kind to your hands. And it's mighty economical, too. Just about a penny a day for all your dishwashing with large-sized ivory soap. And let's get into the last half of this second inning. Big Snars is up there. Ernie Lombardi. And the correction has just come in from Tampa, Florida, through Western Union. We advised you that Ruffing was the starting pitcher. And the Ruffing just struck out. Well, change that. Our operator from Tampa says it's been Gomez all the time. So make it Gomez is being just struck out. And Gomez, who got the Reds out in the first inning, gave up one base on balls. Now, have you changed your cards? Okay. So have we here in the studios. All right, so it's Lefty Gomez. He of the old petrol twist out there on the mound. Lefty Gomez. It also makes that uh, three straight pitches to three straight strikes to the Yankee pitcher in the second inning make a little bit more sense than the figure was Gomez and not Ruffin. Lombardi up, big right-handed hitter, and Slender uh, Lefty Gomez on the mound. Lombardi set, open stand. He's the only batter in the major leagues that uses an interlocking finger grip in holding his war club. Gomez comes in with his opening pitch. Lombardi swings. It's a ground ball down toward third. Dahlgren digs it out. The throw over to first has Lombardi out before he's more than two-thirds of the way down. And Ernie, going after the first pitch, is thrown out third to first. Now I have Harry Kraft, the young center fielder. This is the last of the second inning. One out for the Reds in the ball game at Tampa. Gomez is the pitcher for the Yankees, contrary to anything you may have heard earlier. Harry Kraft up. Gomez pitches and Kraft swings on the first one, hits it on the ground, and it twists foul before it gets to third base. Dalton goes over, picks it up, the ball remains in play. Nothing in one. Harry Kraft. One out, base is empty. Gomez winds up Biggerson, lets fly, Kraft takes. It's good for a strike. And Harry is in back. Nothing in two. Gomez goes ahead. One out, base is empty. The pitcher centers all of his attention on the hitter. Gomez works and Kraft swings. At the sharp line drive, Crosetti throws up his glove and the ball sticks. And Kraft hits the line drive that Crosetti held on to at shortstop. That's all for Harry. And it's two men out. Last of the second. No score. Eddie Juice. The batter. He's the rookie second baseman. The Reds are counting on heavily. To fill what to a lot of observers seems to be a gap at second base. Eddie Juice hits right-handed. Splendor, I was Kansas City last year. Perhaps you wonder, as long as he had such a great season at Kansas City, why the Reds didn't pull him in. Well, he was at Kansas City and was not able to be taken away from the ball club for the entire season in 1938. He was out for the entire year. Juice swings on Gomez's first pitch. It's a high fly ball going out of the center field. DiMaggio, Andrich, waiting, and has it. That's all for Juice. Reds go down. Nothing across. At the end of two innings, it's no runs and no hits for either side. No errors for either side. Gomez has walked one. He's faced seven batters to get his first six out. Grissom had a lot of trouble with his control in the second inning. He walked three men then. He's faced nine men to get his first three out. At the end of two full innings, it's nothing across for either ball club as far as runs, hits, and errors are concerned. The Yankees versus the Reds on the broadcast brought to you by Ivory Soap. And we pause for station identification. WHL and Drop Low State Theater Building, New York City. All right, now let's rally around and see what comes off in the third inning. It's the top of the order for the Yankees. The ball game scoreless, hitless, and Errorless. Frankie Crosetti is first up. Grissom struck him out. Start the ball game off. Crosetti, the right-handed hitter. He's a pepper box. 
Burley, Lee Grissom throws. Grisetti swings on it. It's a line drive deep out into center field. Harry Kraft is on his mule going back, and he pulls it down, running with his back to the infield. Caught it over his shoulder. That's two nice catches for Harry Kraft in deep center field. He went way back and over into left center field to get the Maggio's line drive. First set in the second inning. And Grisetti hit one a mile. That's a big ballpark at Tampa. It's really no ballpark at all as far as the relationship of fences go. If you hit one past the outfielders, it's gone. So that's one up and one away in the top of the third. And Kraft is having a busy afternoon in center field. And Grissom is getting gilt edge support. The hitter now is Jake Powell. He came up in the first inning. Right-handed hitter and fouled out to catch a Lombardi. Grissom studies Ernie's sign. Pitches inside for ball one. One and oh. On deck to hit next is Gallagher. Lee throws. Powell swings. It's a high infield pop-up. Richardson calls for it short. He's not moving out of his track. Waiting and has it. There is what you might call conservation of energy. Yes, sir. Richardson didn't have to move out of his tracks. And so to catch that one off Powell was just about as easy as picking up a cake of ivory soap in the shower. That's two up and two down. Hit an ass Gallagher. Big right-hander. Grissom fires a fast one, and Gallagher swings and misses. Nothing in one. Two out for the Yankees here in the third. Nobody on. Lee delivers. Gallagher takes and calls strike. Nothing in two. Two away. Lee throws. Gallagher swings. Lifts it up and back. Foul. Lands against the stand. Still nothing in two. Have Lombardi and Kraft. First two up in the last two seconds. Got the ball going out of the infield and then got juice. On an easy fly ball to DiMaggio in center. But there hasn't been a ball well hit. Off Gomez yet. Pass to the third. Ball game nothing and nothing. Nolan Richardson. First set. Hit right-handed. He's been around baseball a great deal. Years ago, he was the property of the New York Yankees. He's a Georgia boy. Went all through the University of Georgia. Took about every sports letter they had down there for varsity competition. He's also a captain of three different varsity outfits. It's right-handed. Left hand to Gomez fires outside, and it's ball one. The Yankee ball club pulls just a little bit to the left. Not very deep. Richardson's more what they call a sleeve hitter. Gomez comes in with it. Richardson gets a hold of it. It's a slashing drive out toward left center field. There goes Jake Powell, and he pulls it down nicely. And it's all for Richardson. One up and one away. That's the first ball that definitely has been well hit off Gomez. Powell was there when it came down. And Lee Grissom gets a nice hand from the fans as he steps up to the plate. We'll have to wait a moment to tell you whether he's going to bat right or left-handed. Lee is uh, a switch hitter. For the accident on the switch. <laughs> he gets up on either side. And he steps up to hit left-handed against left-hander Gomez. Figure that out. However, from the red leg side of the picture, it doesn't make much difference. Grissom very rarely gets on. It's all right with the Reds if he doesn't get on. Just when he was in shape to help them last summer, what might have been a push toward higher things, he did loop in a base hit in the second inning. Before anybody knew it, he sold off the first base and hit it for second in a very awkward slide, twisted an ankle, and never threw another baseball until this spring. The first pitch to Grissom is outside for ball one. Gomez doesn't waste much time studying. Comes right back, this one high for ball two. Uh, way up there. Lee takes. It's a fast one. Buzz down in there for a strike. Two and one. One out. Base is empty. Haven't had a hit in this ball game, much less a run. Gomez pitches, gets some swings and misses. And in high dudgeon, Lee steps over home plate and he's going to hit right handed now. Then up there batting left handed. He's up there hitting right handed with a two and two count. Gomez sort of grin. I guess Gomez and Gustin sort of have a bond between them. A few hits that they both put together get. The pitch is outside for ball three. Three and two. Gustin still staying up there right-handed. 
Gomez comes down and gets him swinging. It's an easy roller toward third. Dogged him up a couple of steps to pick up the throw over to first. That's all for Grissom. And there's two men out in the last of the third inning. Two down. Lannis Klein is the batter. Lannis used to be a switch hitter when he was playing with the Dodgers. But he doesn't bat right-handed anymore. He hits left-handed all the way through. Gomez with nobody on him back of him. Two men out. That's his first pitch. It's outside. All one. One and nothing. Fly, very slender. Feet rather close together. So to stick a little. Steps back from pitch. It's up under the chin. Ball two. Two and nothing. Gomez slightly behind. He's going to be trying very, very decidedly to get this one in there. He's a little bit outside for ball three. And it's 3 nothing. Fire sitting up there in the catbird seat. Gomez throws. The automatic strike registers. That one in there. Fire was taken. 3 and 1. 2 out. No wind up. Ball four inside. And Fries throws off the first base. That's the second base on ball given up by Gomez. Each time that he's walked somebody, he's walked a man. Well, the base is empty and two out. Now with two away, Fry is at first and up steps Wally Berger for a second time. Big left fielder, better than six foot blonde, it's right handed. Cowfield's at war club, cocks it way back of his right ear for a full swing. Gomez watches first, delivers to the plate, outside for ball one. Goofy seems to be having a little trouble with his control right now. Left hand to throws. Berger gets a hold of it. It's a sharp base hit. Through the hole between third and short. Out into left field. Fries around second. Comes on toward third. The throw end goes to second base, and Berger holds it first. And there's the first hit of the afternoon. Wally Berger wraps one through the left side of the infield and out into left. A sharp single in the left field. Sending Fry, who was running with the swing, two men out, all the way around to third. That's the first hit of the game. And now there's Berger leading off first. Fry off third. The hitter is Stan Bordegaray. He figured to be quite a handy man for the Cincinnati club this year. He can either play the infield or the outfield, and he's rated as one of the best right-handed pinch hitters in the league. He's a little fellow. He's not much taller than four or five cakes of iris to pile them up. But he can move. Gomez comes down in with a pitch, and Bordegaray swinging. Hits it sharply toward short. Grisetti in front of it. There's the throw over to Gehrig, and Bordegray's out by a stride. And that's all for the red leg threat. The last of the third inning. Bordegray being tossed out, short to first. No runs, one hit. The only hit of the game so far. Berger's singling to left field. Two men left. At the end of three innings. No runs, one hit, no errors for Cincinnati. No runs, no hits, no errors for the Yankees. The story for three full innings. And we're pausing now for station identification. WHM, New York. Let's take a gamble at the fourth inning. It's Joe DiMaggio, first up with Gehrig to follow, and then Gordon. Lee Grissom's still going to go out there far for the red. Bill McKechnie is working his pitches, pretty long stretches these days. Grissom, who so far has held the heavy-hitting Bronx Bummers to no hits. That won't keep up. DiMaggio takes the first pitch. It's in there. Good for a strike. Nothing in one. Go away. Good accommodation. DiMaggio swings hard. And it's a high fly ball coming down into short center field. Richardson goes back from short. Crash stays out of the play. And it's Richardson scooping it. And back of second base. That's all for DiMaggio. That was just a little bit too high to be a Texas leaguer. And up steps Lou Gehrig who was the first Yankee to get on base this afternoon. He drew a base on ball. Second inning was one out. Grissom had retired the first four men that he'd faced. It's a scoreless affair between the Yankees and the Reds. Game being played at Tampa. Temperature 80 degrees down there and lots of sunshine. Gary takes a strike. Grissom laid it right through. Lou didn't want it. Nothing in one. The pitch. Gary swings. 
It's a line drive hit over Ritson's head out into left center field at the base hit. Gary turns to the left at first base and holds on. As Berger retrieves, throws into second. And Gary gets the first hit for the Yankees. First hit off Grissom. So if you had any ideas about a no-hitter going on for either side, they've both been dispelled in the last couple of minutes. Berger single with two out in the last of the third off Gomez. Gehrig with one out has just singled into left field off Grissom. Upsets Gordon. He was walked in the second inning. It's right-handed. Gehrig leading off first. Chris pitches and Gordon swinging on the first one. Foul tips it into the screen. For strike one. Nothing in one. New ball being put in play. Rubbed up. Chris takes another look toward first. Throws to Gordon inside. Starting to hit a back a half step. One and one. One ball and one strike. Lee comes down wide. Pitch that didn't break down and in. Thrown by left hander to a right hand batter. Ball two. Two balls, one strike. One out. Gary at first. McCormick holding the corner against him. Chris ready. Delivers outside for ball three. And that old devil controls. Look at Mr. Grissom right in the face. Slap dead it. Three and one. Ball four outside. And Gordon, for the second straight time, draws a base on ball. That pushes Gary down to second base. And now the Yankees has got a full-fledged threat going. Here in the top of the fourth inning. Gary single, the first by the Yankees. And the fourth base on ball given up by Grissom. Up steps Dahlgren. Hitting right handed. Grissom studies a moment. First pitch is low inside for ball one. The throw is inside. Ball two. Dahlgren stepping back a little. Two and oh. And Lee throws that ball into the dirt down toward the plate. And asks Dunfire Campbell for a new agate. He's tired of throwing this one. No ball players get a little bit superstitious. Maybe this ball has a little roughness to something. Anyhow, Grissom has no longer any confidence in it. He just walked Gordon. His first two pitches to Dalton have been wide. Both of them inside. And so, out comes a shiny white new one. Just as shiny and white looking as though it just had an ivory bath. Now let's see what Grissom does with this new apple. Sets. Watches his runners. Gordon in first. Gary gets second. One out. Here in the fourth. And no score. Dalton takes and it's a fastball hopping through for a strike. Two and one. Two balls, one strike. Chris reaches up over his head, comes slowly down his position. Another gaudy look at those runners. Here's the pitch, Dogman swinging, and it's a high foul up and back onto the stand, out of Lombardi's reach. Two and two. Two balls and two strikes. Another new ball in play. Chris is ready. Ernie steps back of the plate. Dalton tossed that walk club up over his right shoulder. The throw, high outside for ball three. And now Lee is in a jam. If he misses one more, he'll have those bases reloaded. He loaded them with three walks in the second inning. Three and two to Dave Dahlgren. Gordon at first and Gary gets second. In lines that 3-2 pitch, Dahlgren swings. It's a sharp foul. Back of third base. That one hit on the line. Dahlgren was after that one. Got a hold of it a little too well. Got out in front of it. Still three and two. Now let's see. Gary takes his lead off second. Gordon off first. This one comes in three and two and Dalton swinging. It's a high foul ball. Blowing down and back of first base. McCormick shading his eyes with his glove is waiting and makes the catch. And the runners hold on right where they were. Gary at second and Gordon at first. And Dalton hits a high foul which Frank McCormick gathers in for the second out. And now it's two down in the top of the fourth. This is quite a ball game. A beautiful pitchers do it considering the earliness of the season. Aunt Jorgens doing the catching right now for the Yankees. Hitting right handed, stands at the plate. Chris misses him outside for ball one. The left hander is still being troubled. And the fact that he cannot get that pitch where he wants it. He comes in with this one and Jorgens swings and foul tips it into the screen. The screen protecting those spectators who are sitting directly behind home. That's one and one, two out. 
Gary and Gordon ready to go from second and first respectively. No score. Chris delivers one and one, and Jorgen swings. It's a high foul and back up third. Over comes Fry. He's under it now, waiting, and has it. And so ends the Yankee threat. Top of the fourth inning. No run. One hit. Two men left on. And it's an errorless ball game all the way through. Well, at long last, Mr. Ruffing is now going to pitch for the Yankees. And Gomez, after pitching the first three innings, is finished for today. And Gomez, in going the first three innings, gave up one hit, a single to Wally Berger, walked two men, didn't strike out anybody. And he had three very efficient innings. And it's Red Ruffing, who is now coming in to pitch for the Yankees. The first batter Ruffing will face is first baseman Frank McCormick. We're coming into the last of the fourth inning. And Ruffing is the pitcher. Big, burly right-hander. No fooling. He is big. 200 pounds and 6 feet. Charlie Ruffin. Not Chicago way. Let's see. Ruffin's ready. So is Frank McCormick waiting. B. McCormick, then Lombardi and Kraft. The first pitch is low for ball one. McCormick sets. He has a little trick when he stands there in batter's box. Sort of lifting up his shoulders as though the uniform shakes. A little bit tight around the armpits. I think that's more a mannerism than anything else. Frank waiting. Levels off that wood. Ruffing right-handed. McCormick swings. It's a ground ball toward third. Dogged in up with it. There's the throw over toward Gehrig. And with a stretch into the infield, Gehrig takes it and McCormick is out. And Red Ruffing gets the first batter he faces out on two pitched balls. Up now is Ernie Lombardi. He was thrown out third to first. First trip up. Big, powerful Italian. Sets himself. Right-hand hitter. I truly wish it was longer, but that's all that the audio that we had for the game. But it certainly was a taste of baseball and a time that we all need it. And if you're up in New England, it's kind of a chilly day, actually. So it's good to think about baseball and the sun and warm air. And um, hopefully baseball comes back soon. So if you want to learn more about what happened on March 15th, Go to thisdayinbaseball.com slash March 15th, and you can see all the events that happen on March 15th, and you can see the players that played in this game, and you can go ahead and do some more research and dive into that treasure chest. And if you do go on to March 15th, you're going to see that even though March 15th is a middle of spring training, we have 48 events, 55 birthdays, and 16 passings just for March 15th alone. So there's a lot of content there, and I hope you... Uh, Head on over there and enjoy it, and you can sign up for our updates while you're there, and you can talk, talk to baseball fans just like you in our forums. And I want to tell you that uh, today's clip was actually brought to you by the Internet Radio Archive, and you can find them in our show links, and you can go over there. They have tons of baseball stuff at the Internet Radio Archives. And I want to thank you for joining me today on the Daily Rewind. And if you enjoyed the show, of course, I have two asks for you. Sharing is caring. And the way our show grows is by telling your friends. And if you share the show when you can on social media, when you're face-to-face -face with people, although that's limited these days, uh, but tell your friends about the show. And I'm sure that they'd appreciate it, especially if they're big baseball fans just like you. And if you subscribe to the show, you're going to get new content every time it comes out. Of course, we call ourselves a Daily Rewind. We'd love to put content out every day, but, uh, you know, uh, we do about three or four episodes every single week. And if you have any feedback, you can reach me directly at tdinbb at gmail.com. Again, my name is Tom Hannon, and I want to thank you for joining me on the Daily Rewind. We'll be seeing you at the ballpark. Peace. <laughs>